Good morning, everybody, on this uh, 18th of July, the day before lockdown is supposed to end. I have here a, a book, it says, Fighting Cockpits, because on a wonderful sunny day like this, one thing I give a hundred quid to do, and more, is to go to an air show. I love things like that. I like the ambience there. I like the different types of aircraft. I've got loads of books about aircraft at home, and that's one thing I moved heaven and earth to do if there was an air show within 100 miles or 200 miles of here today. More about what we want to do in a moment. And uh, we're going to hear first the reading set for today, which is going to be read by Hazel Reynolds, and Olwyn Smith will be doing the intercessions later on. So see you in a moment. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. <clears throat> Reading from Mark 6. <clears throat> the apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in a boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognised them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As Jesus went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd, and he began to teach them many things. And now reading from verse 53, still in Mark 6. When they had crossed over, they came to land at Gennesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognised Jesus and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, he, into villages or cities or farms, they led the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak and all who touched it were healed. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. So then, you know what I look forward to on days like this? Um, what do you really look forward to in life? Well, several days ago, some of us were looking forward to the European Cup final. But after another disastrous penalty shootout that was entirely predictable, we spent the week in mourning. And the town was eerily, eerily quiet the day after that cup final. Well, I thought it was. Maybe it was in my head. If you were a football fan, what would you have given up to get one of those cup final tickets? Whatever thrills you in life, what are you prepared to give up, suffer, and how far are you prepared to travel to obtain your treasure? I knew a lady once who, in another parish, who gave up most of what she had in order to pursue her interest in ice skating. She used to love going to ice skating shows all around the world. She didn't own much. She lived in a tiny little a bed sit, really. But she was happy with her lot and her sacrifice. And now lockdown is supposed to be ending. Any of you who are single out there should be perhaps preparing to spend time and money, more time and money, actually dating instead of only having online Zoom and text relationships. What makes you tingle, folks? What gets your hopes up? What is it you want to do or be above anything else in life? What focuses your mind and heart totally 
more than anything or anyone in the world? What is it you'd really put yourselves out for? Well, today's reading that Hazel has just read to us is all about people being keen and eager to discover the living Lord. They followed him around for miles to see and hear him. We are told that so many people were coming and going that Jesus and his friends didn't even have a chance to eat. They tried to sneak away to a quiet place to get some nosh, but they were spotted and people ran on foot to get to where he was going, ahead of Jesus. Everywhere he went, there was a huge crowd wanting him. We're told that folk ran throughout the region. They ran throughout, hot, hot, hotter than this, the climate there, but they ran throughout the region, carrying their sick with them in the hope that Jesus and his disciples, people like you and me, would heal them. Jesus and, and his disciples would heal them. But, as you will notice in that reading, there's a big bit missed out of this set reading for today. Yep, a major miracle is missed out between the first half of that reading and the second half. Does anybody know what it is? It's just missed out. Hazel said, I now continue on verse 53 or something, didn't she? Right, what's the major miracle that's missed out? Does anybody know? You're all being good Anglicans, aren't you? The 5,000. You do read your scriptures. The feeding of the 5,000, yeah. A mega miracle is just missed out of the lectionary this week. All we hear about in today's set reading is about how keen people were to find Jesus, to look for him. How they spent days in the middle of nowhere, inhospitable places, trying to seek for where he was. And you know, there's something important about this spiritual thirst that they had. Something to teach us today. The idea of the spiritual thirst is so important in this reading that a major miracle is just left out of the reading so you don't get distracted onto the major miracle. You see, ladies and gentlemen, there's something about this spiritual thirst that makes things happen in the supernatural realm. And God is, of course, by definition supernatural. Jesus' compassion for the crowd wasn't just because they all looked tired, you know, oh, we've been out a long day, a bit tired and thirsty, so he decided to feed them like any good atheist or agnostic would. No. Jesus' compassion wasn't because they looked tired and thirsty. Anyone can feed tired and thirsty people. You don't need to be a Christian. His compassion was because they travel miles to see him, to be in his presence, to learn from him, to be part of him. They come a long way seeking wisdom and God's presence. It says that when Jesus saw the large crowd, he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. Because they were like sheep without a shepherd. It was then that the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000 happened. Then their bellies too were satisfied by the Lord. Their eagerness for the wisdom of God moved heaven to provide the miracle for their physical needs. Which begs the question, guys and girls, how keen 
are we for the things of the Lord? Really? How far are we prepared to travel physically or in our minds in order to encounter Jesus? What are we prepared to let go of or leave behind in order to find him? What or who is blocking us from doing this? Well, that's another sermon for another time, that sentence. Who or what is blocking us? Is the wisdom and love of God more important than anything or anybody else in our life? Because nothing else really works until you love God first. How much do we really seek to let God change some of the erroneous sacred cows in our thinking? Are we hungry to let God touch those muddled, murky things in our lives that just blind our eyes to God's love and activity? How much do we spiritually stretch and reach to the point of being away from the familiar in order to know even a little more about God? This attitude of spiritual hunger is what triggers the Lord into sharing the world of the miraculous or his supernatural presence with you. This thirst, your spiritual hunger, paves the way for the miraculous. It's a bit like romance. Do you remember that? Some of you are going, mm, oh, sort of. <laughs> you may be hot for somebody, really hot for them. Ever felt like that? Think back, come on. You ever felt really hot for somebody? But nothing will happen if you only spend your time looking across the dance floor at that person. Nothing will happen. You have to make a move and push through the crowd and ask him or her for a dance. You have to be romantically hungry Hungry enough to go where that person is, to take a risk, sweat a bit, talk to them, ask them for a dance. And in the future, who knows, maybe you'll be married and living somewhere entirely different to where you'd once expected to be. And the crowd in the story weren't prepared to gaze only from afar and listen only to sermons from people like me about Jesus. They wanted him in their lives. Not just on Sunday, we do our bit in church. They wanted him in their whole lives. And it's that deep desire and need that moved Jesus into the miracle that was to come, the 5,000. They wanted him, and he responded. And the bit missed out today, the feeding of the 5,000, prefigures what we're doing today. The Eucharist, communion, a representation of our spiritual hunger, wanting to be together and share this in his invisible but very real presence. And our hunger can be expressed in other ways too, during the week. We can have a daily prayer time with the Lord, even if it's for 10 minutes, 20 minutes or half an hour, regularly. Don't just fit it in when you've got a few moments. That's treating God as the old cigarette nub end, you know. When I've got a bit of time, I'll come pray to God. That's not what you do with someone you love. You make time for them daily prayer time with the Lord. You can seek out books about him, books that can change your life and perspective. We can share our walk of faith from other brothers and sisters here today. We can ask God for the gifts of his Holy Spirit. We can ask questions, 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 
Search, seek, knock, and it will be opened to you. Keep at it until breakthrough happens. So how, how, how hungry are you? I once ministered in a church which didn't have an evening service. Somebody at the school I taught in told me about a church which was about 20 miles from where I lived. It was an established church, but I was told that the Spirit of the Lord had been powerfully moving there for several months, and especially at the evening service. Someone who'd been there, she suggested that I go, and I meet them there. Perhaps they thought I needed it. <laughs> now, I had lots of other things to do that night, and people to see, and this place anyway was difficult to find. No sat-nav in those days, and if you know me, you know my navigation skills are zero. And my old banger of a car, was playing up too. Any sensible person would have stayed at home and said, I'll go another night when it's not winter anyway. But you know, by then it may be too late. And the Holy Spirit, the presence of the Lord, may have moved on. Remember, the Holy Spirit's like a wind. You don't know where it's coming to, from and you don't know where it's going to. So I decided to postpone my social engagements, family engagements too. I was just too curious to witness this move of the Holy Spirit at that place. So I took the risk. I got lost in the dark more than a few times on the way and I arrived just in time at a snail's pace with a dodgy alternator in the car engine. What I encountered at this fairly traditional church was amazing. I'll never forget that night, ever. You couldn't forget it. Anyone of you had been there, you wouldn't forget it. I never forgot it. I saw the powerful activity of the Lord sweep across the congregation, traditional folk, time and time again, wave after wave. And if you're hungry enough, you can chase me down in the week and I'll share with you more about what I witnessed with my own eyes on that particular night. It left me thirsty for more. And I'm glad I took the risk and went seeking. I wasn't seeking for knowledge. You can get that from a book. I was seeking for a relationship with him. Encountering him is entirely different from learning about him in a book. So the message today finally I suppose it's really quite simple. It's how thirsty are we really to discover where the presence of the Lord is and where the Lord is showing up? Are we like the crowd upon whom Jesus had compassion, who really sought for a relationship with their maker and shepherd? This, ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about the God who made us and to whom we will return when our time is up here on earth. So the question of how thirsty we are for God is a very significant question to ask. But after what I saw and have seen since, it's a very exciting question too. Amen. Let's pray.
presence of the Lord, let us pray for the people of God, that everyone may be a true and faithful servant of Christ. Everlasting God, by your infinite wisdom, sustain Alan, our bishop, Nick, our priest, our ministry team, and all who proclaim the word of truth. Inspire those who teach, those who learn, and all who seek the truth. When your son, Lord Jesus, saw a great crowd of people, like sheep without the shepherd, he had compassion on them. Empower the people worshipping together today, in church or online, to open ourselves to your grace. Bring a true knowledge of yourself to those drawing near to the light of faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, thank you for this beautiful earth. It provides us with everything we need. Forgive us for the greed that has led to so much devastation. Teach us to use your gift wisely so that we can preserve the unspoiled places, clean up the areas of devastation and live sustainably in harmony with nature. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Remind us of the people who are less fortunate than we are, especially those who live in the parts of the world where there is conflict, in places where there is drought or famine, and where there is a shortage of COVID vaccine. Help us to remember those who are weary with the relentless struggle to keep alive, for those who can never look forward to a good meal and a comfortable bed, those who barely have the necessities of life, and those who are forced to flee from conflict, cruelty and starvation. Imbue us with a spirit of generosity, so that we do what we can to support the agencies who work in these difficult circumstances. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Loving Father, guide our families and friends and give them joy in all they do. Keep them safe in this holiday season so that they travel safely and return refreshed. Help us to demonstrate your love and in so doing to bring them closer to you. Thank you for the people whose work sustained us in the town, for the businesses, the care homes, for the public and emergency services and for all who work in health services. From tomorrow, as the COVID regulations are replaced with guidance, help us all to respect the needs of others and keep one another safe. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Comfort and sustain everyone who is hungry or sick, persecuted, lonely, ignored or bereaved. Ease their pain and heal the damage done to them in body, mind or spirit. Be present with them through the support of friends and in the care of doctors and nurses. Fill them with the warmth of your love, now and always. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Merciful God, we commend into your hands those whom we have loved and now have lost. You gave them breath and loved and cared for them throughout their lives. Receive them now in your eternal kingdom, and may they rest in peace and rise in glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept and fulfil our prayers, not as we ask in ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness. But as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. 